Kathy and Tim here to welcome you to Volume 2, Extraordinary Coastal Realms. We're here at the amazing Acadia National Park, the Rocky Main Coast. And the environment here appears so different from our first field study at Padre Island National Seashore. But we wish to show you the next few minutes uh, that this coastline exists in this magnificent dynamic form due to similar conditions or these same conditions of sea level rise and stasis that developed uh, after the melting of worldwide glaciers, uh, ending the last ice age about 10,000 years ago. Remember, these same sea level conditions led to the formation of barrier islands such as our beloved Padre Island, but the amazing additional geologic conditions that led to this beautiful craggy coast was the powerful scouring effect of the overlying glaciers during the last ice age. We will visit many hidden geologic signatures of this last glacial period. So welcome to the beautiful rocky coast of Maine. Here we are at another beautiful location at Acadia National Park, obviously along the rocky coast. When glaciers passed over this area, this coastline, they gouged down to the bedrock and left many scoured rocks and valleys, shallow valleys. As sea level rose with the glaciers melting, the cove was filled in. And here we have this beautiful natural cove. Let's not forget that this produced many different uh, locations and niches for organisms to exist along the rocky uh, crags and tide pools. This life includes lobsters scuttling across the bottom and crustaceans and coastal fish and invertebrates of all kinds, all part of that rich a unique community that exists here along the rocky coast, this beautiful location. This is Sand Beach at Acadia National Park in Maine. A beach is wave deposited sediment along the coast, and beaches in this part of the Atlantic Ocean are rare because the coast is elevated and rocky. is on the east side of Day Mountain in Acadia National Park and is about 200 feet above present day sea level. These boulders are actually a beach deposit that can be determined because they're very well rounded, they're very well sorted. And they were deposited about 10,000 years ago. The ocean would have been back that way, upland would have been up this way. Obviously beaches aren't forming here present day. That means that at this location sea level has actually dropped and you just learned in the video that as glaciers melted sea level rose. So what's going on with this site? It turns out that besides sea level rising and falling due to adding or taking away water from the oceans, a second way sea level can rise or fall is if the land either moves down causing sea level rise or the land moves up causing a local sea level drop and that's what happened here. When the glaciers were present they pushed the land down about 200 feet. Then as the glaciers melted, sea level globally rose, but the land was still pushed down. About 10,000 years ago, this beach formed, and since that time, the land has rebounded, bringing this beach to its present day elevation. This area is a tidal flat, and like many coastal features on the coast of Maine, it is affected by the tides and it is formed in a low-lying glacially carved valley. This area has a stream flowing through it, bringing fresh water. You can see the stream channel to my right. And it also is a very sheltered environment 
That's what allows the mud to settle out. The stream is very high in nutrients, and the high nutrient load makes this a very productive area. Even though you don't see them, many animals live here, including many mollusks, burrowing worms, shorebirds, crabs, and many planktonic larval forms of ocean animals. Tidal pools are an important microhabitat that occurs in the intertidal zone along this drowned glacial coastline. This is a great place to explore where you can find animals like this green sea urchin. And perhaps northern sea star. And myriad other creatures that live in this special community of the tide pools. This shallow cave on the side of Gora Mountain actually formed about 10,000 years ago, the same time as the relict beach, when sea level was higher, and it was formed by erosion due to waves. It's very similar to Anemone Cave, which you'll be seeing soon, which is a modern cave that's forming by wave erosion at present day sea level. While we're here, I want to show you where sea level is today. Come on. that I was just in is a great place to see a view of the present day ocean sea level, which is about 200 feet lower. This is Anemone Cave. This is a coastal cave or sea cave that has formed during recent geological time due to wave erosion after sea level stabilized a couple of thousand years ago. Inside the cave, right now it's low tide, are tidal pools. And the tidal pools are, because they're in a cave, are sheltered from the sun, and that makes the conditions a lot less extreme here. And so a lot of the organisms live in this tidal pool that you might not see even in other tidal pools because of the shelter. Those might include blue mussels, sponges, different species of sea anemones, sea urchins, and a variety of red algae like pink encrusting algae. Yet another example of the extraordinary coastal realm of Acadia National Park. This is the lovely Somme Sound, a fjord. As glaciers cross the landscape, they at times dig deep, narrow valleys. And as the sea level rose, this valley filled with sea water. Uh, the tides come in and out of this beautiful area daily, and it is another secret signature, a beautiful example of the region's glacial past. Kathy and I have been delighted to bring you Volume 2 of Extraordinary Coastal Realms, Acadia National Park along the rocky, bound Maine coast. Creating this monograph of discovery in this remarkable location reminds us of the many wonderful experiences we've shared with students attending the AIO summer programs, and we all anticipate with joy a return next summer. We hope you will be there. I wish to leave you with an important thought. 
It is no accident that our explorations of extraordinary coastal realms centered on two national parks. National parks of this country represent the highest level of conserving habitat, wildlife, scenery, and recreational opportunities, and they are reservoirs of the natural world for research today and into the future. As a society and a country, it should be one of our highest priorities to protect and expand these irreplaceable natural enclaves. Please do your part to ensure the future of protected public lands, and thank you so much for exploring with us, and who knows where Volume 3 will take us in the future. Thank you.